Good morning. Good morning. You guys all get extra, extra stars for coming out and braving the chilly, chilly mountain air. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. And we're going to invite, uh, oh no, I'm going to do my opening song, my brand new opening song. Have you guys been listening to it? Mikey said you guys were up to it. So, you know, he's like, bring it on. Unity Church of the Mountains will take it and run with it. It's called I'm Ready. And I'll sing it for you. And you're going to sing everything right after me. It's kind of like a chant. So you'll listen the first time and then you'll chime in the second time. And then you're going to be like, yeah. And then you'll be ready to sing I'm Ready. I'm ready to run. I'm ready to run, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to do the impossible. Not to run. Now listen up. I'm ready to rise, I'm ready to shine, I'm ready to feel alive and fine, I'm ready. Can you do it? I'm ready to rise, I'm ready to shine, I'm ready to feel alive and fine, I'm ready. Yeah. We're few but mighty. <laughs> I love it. You guys are awesome. Are you ready for me? I'm, I'm ready for you. We're baby. ready for you. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the Unity Church of the Mountains. It may be freezing cold, but the light always shines. And we're here. And we like she said, you get extra points for being here today. Instead of home in your jammies watching us live on Facebook. The power for January is faith. And here's a quick quote from Matthew 21:22. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So now let us pray. Dear God, please help us to be ready for whatever comes our way. Give us the strength and courage to face any challenge that may arise. Help us to be prepared both physically and mentally so that we can be of service to others in their time of need. May we always be mindful of your goodness, your guidance, and may we never lose sight of your love and grace. Amen. And now for our opening affirmation. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotent. Any guests here today? I, I don't, I haven't met you at least. It, it, Linda, is she new here? Or a friend of yours? Came you came last week. We had a house full last week. Well, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Ellen. Hey, Ellen. I'd nice heard, oh yes, it sure is. Thank you so much for being here. Well, Okay, all of you mighty people, turn around and wave at the camera. Hi, There's a bunch everybody. of people out there Hi, in their everybody. 90s. Yeah. <laughs> if you're welcome zooming all in, you. we love you too, and we welcome you too. Absolutely, absolutely. 
I, let me see here, what we gonna do? Okay, you know what? That's all I've got to say right now. I'm turning it over to Jennifer Farron, who's gonna get us ready. Ready, set, go. Actually, the name of the talk is The Cart Before the Horse, but we're gonna get ready to do a popular Johnny Nash tune that I played as everybody was dancing on in earlier. I can see clearly now, so. The words will be on the screen, chime in. I need to be able to see the chart so I have my glasses on so I can see clearly now. <laughs> so you guys ride along. This is gonna be easy because everybody knows this one. your peppy upbeat one and we're gonna I, I pepped you up and now we're gonna simmer down as my father-in-law would say I think I've done this one here before I have a talk entitled only belief b-e-l-e-a-f you know for the fall that I do so this was a song that I created out of the hymn the good old standard hymn only believe and so all of you are welcome to please sing along on the chorus and we all know that one I'll sing it and you sing it with me but as usual I like, I like everybody to sing along I don't like to be the only one singing we got all these voices in the room right
change may blow just trust your heart and know you will face all that comes your way stay Good morning. I know it's cold outside and it's a little nippy in here. The heat's not keeping up with the cold weather, but we are with warm hearts and warm spirits this morning and happy and joyful. Amen. We're going to do a little something outside the box today. Uh, and I had to ask permission to make sure that this was okay to do. So I want everybody to stand up. We're going to do a little dancing. Oh, good. Right up my alley. I've had my coffee. And um, I'm going to put on, this is, this is what I do every morning. This is what I do to exercise. It's called body groove. And you move and you sing and you do your arms and you move around and, and have a good time. So I'm going to lay the microphone here and you're just going to have to follow my uh, your 
antics. My, my, <laughs> thank you, my <laughs> antics. Okay? And the song that we're going to be doing it by is called Love Set Me Free. I like it. All right, you ready? All right. Mm. Get my stool out of the way. So, so, bust a move, but don't bust it. I don't know about you, but love set me free. Are we ready? I want big, intense from your chest, open heart, open chest. Let's do this. Arms out. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, just a minute. I'm ready. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you know I'm going to bring Lays with me today to give everybody a This hit track is super swanky. We're going to do the Charleston. So I want you to practice it with me because the first few times you do it, it might be a little complicated. But I don't want that to stop you. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, I am, phones are not my, not my uh, forte. Thank you. Okay, when I hit my phone to do something, it changed to another video. So sorry. Okay. Let's they have a mind of their own sometimes, just like our okay. pets. Here we go. So, I don't know about you, but love set me free. Yeah, Are we ready? We're ready. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I want big, intense from your chest, open heart, open chest. Let's do this. Okay. Arms out. Love set me free. Two, three, love. four. Do it again. Oh, one, two. Make it One, louder and bigger. Two. Come on. Love. Set me free. Put a smile louder. and your whole self in it. Love. Love. Set me free. Yes. Now we're going to go into the feet. We're going to go. Down. Bend your knees. Now start to shake your hands like you're going to church. Now I want you to give me some church hand dancing all around your body. Be creative. Set me free. Come on. Yes, love set me free, baby. Love set me free. Maybe even your hair moves. Love set me free. Go a little louder. Louder. Yes. Love set me free. Get ready, everybody. We're going to clap all clap. over. Go. You can clap your body. Clap your body. Get your heart rate going and get your mojo going and and I, somebody said to me I'm sorry somebody said to me one time when I said I don't like to exercise they said well what do you love to do I said I love dance. to dance Boom. I was 10 years a dance student there you go. Uh, in my childhood yeah, man. so I've always been a dancer so anyway I can't breathe now. <laughs> well, listen, while you catch your breath, I will say, being a former dance instructor to little babies, nothing shifts your energy quicker, especially if you're feeling in a funk or you're feeling down or you're feeling kind of sluggish and brain foggy, than to just stop what you're doing, put on your favorite tune, and just dance and move. Boogie I down. It really does feel good, and you don't have to hyperextend yourself, but, you know, just gently move around. It really helps so much. Yeah, go Movement according to your age. Yeah. <laughs> But then don't go according to your age. Go according to what you think you can do. Right. Age has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's just a number. Okay, so this morning, as I was preparing for my prayer time today, um, I read the Daily Word yesterday, and it just really touched my heart. So I'm going to read it to you before we say our prayer. Perspective. I put God first and evaluate my perspective. My personal history and unique experience determines how I see the world. I remember this when I'm tempted to look at any troubling or disappointing situations and think that's just the way it is. The truth is there are many ways to perceive the world around me. If I don't like what life is showing me, 
I have the power to change what I'm seeing by going within myself. I alter my perspective by keeping God at the forefront of my thinking. I do this by practicing gratitude for blessing already pr present, for blessings already present, as well as those that are on the way. I also pray not for specific things or certain results, but to touch the peace and perfection of the divine and to carry it with me throughout my day. As I elevate my perspective, the world around me changes for the better. And the scripture is Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. As we honor our prayer box today, um, that we pray for for 30 days, and then we send it to Silent Unity for 30 days, and they pray for it. Uh, and that's been going on for 100 years. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. Yes. Also, I would like to tell you that after the service, I'll be over by the door to the library, and if you would like personal, confidential prayer, I would be glad to pray with you. As we close our eyes and center ourselves in our heart space, if you have names or situations that you have on your heart, you may say them to yourself or out loud at this time. Sweet, sweet spirit, as we are centered, we ask to see every person and every situation with the eyes of unconditional love. Help us to see troubling times and situations we are in, whatever they may be, with the eyes of unconditional love. As we know that love is all there is. If it's for ourselves or others or situations in our world, let us not be tempted to see it without the eyes of love and understanding. Let us also remember the only real part of our humanness is our eternal spirit. And so it is. And the word for today is energetic. What a word. Mm. Excuse me. The limitless energy of spirit flows through me. I smile as I watch children play. Their boundless energy seems to so natural and effortless. When I want to reclaim this same zeal and enthusiasm for myself, I remember these divine gifts are already within me. Centered in this awareness, I feel renewed vitality as I take care of my family, move through my workday, enjoy time with dear ones, or volunteer in my community. I engage it all with enthusiasm and feel my energy build. If I feel my enthusiasm faltering, I don't despair. Instead, I pause for a moment to feel the quickening energy of spirit, the divine life and strength that are flowing through me. As I am revitalized, the world feels new. The sh shimmer of energy, and I shimmer with energy and go about doing all I feel called to do. And the scripture is Colossians 1, 11. May you be made strong with all your strength that comes from his goodness and glorious power. Thank you so much. And now let's relax into our chairs, take anything off of our laps. If we have glasses on our face and we want them off our face, just tuck them in your shirt if you want to. Let's 
focus on breathing in, and holding for just a bit, and releasing at your own pace. the power to connect in. We have the power to tap in and to align with energy. come to you today open ready to allow your grace to enter in anything that may be heavy on our hearts we allow you to take it transform the energy ourselves to be aligned Spirit we call on your guidance and your direction in our hearts for newness and vitality. We prepare a space in our minds for clarity. We prepare room in our spirituality for faith, Thanks for all that is, for all that will be, for all that has been. And we move forward with grace and ease because we are empowered. We are strong and full of life.
but strong and full of life. Sing with me. I am empowered, strong and full of life. I know it's so, and I know it's so, and so it is, and so it is. lovely, delicious energy that Jan and Susie helped to create and that everyone is co-creating. Because as soon as Jan said, okay, everybody get up and dance, everybody's like, okay, let's do it. It was like a symbiotic, automatic thing where everybody, nobody even questioned, nobody went, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> well, that's true. That's the benefit of it being cold in here. You want to warm up. Um, today we're talking about the cart and the horse. Hmm, Jennifer, what do you think that's going to be about? Well, it is the beginning of the new year after all. And it's, everybody talks, everybody preaches and does their messages about resolutions at the beginning of the year. So this is my take on the resolution speech or the resolution motivational talk. Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of Science of Mind, Religious Science, Centers for Spiritual Living now, uh, Ernest Holmes says, life is a mirror and will reflect back to the thinker what they think into it. Eden Philpotts, a British novelist and playwright, says, the universe is full of magic things, patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. So today, I'm going to share with you about how to reach our goals. Now, being a Virgo, organization is near and dear to my heart. And I have a lot of Leo in my house, too. So when I have a goal in mind, I have learned over the years, working in offices during the day, most of my most of my adult life in accounting firms or at music agencies or at a dance studio. I've always been, I've always had multiple things and been a multitasker in all of the jobs that I've had. So it was crucial from an early age for me to write things down and write my list of tasks for whatever job I was at for the day. And back in the old days, we didn't have the cell phones and the computers. I mean, back when I, I mean, I was, I mean, I'm, going to be 57 this year. So even when I was a kid in the 80s, we didn't have cell phones and we didn't have home computers yet. I had already been working in the professional field like four years after I graduated until we finally got our one computer for the office. <laughs> but anyway, so back in the day, you had to actively write things out. And that's what I do now. And being an artist, too, and songwriter, I always write with a pen or a pencil and paper. I, don't, I generally don't put on directly onto a computer or onto a screen. It just feels better. It, it just feels like things flow easier when you don't have the electronic devices in the way. But so when I have a goal in mind, I begin by creating an outline, a to-do list, and by creating a solid, doable plan of action, we can set ourselves up for success with whatever we want to accomplish. Maybe if we don't have any huge resolutions this year, maybe it's just a break out of our you know, routine of our same five meals every week and to delve into something different and try something new. I have a friend out in Colorado. He's baking something different every day. He and his wife, Scott Johnson and his wife, are baking, and they, he's posting little pictures on Facebook. Hey, do something new every day. 
I'm like, that's a cool goal to have, to do something new. But Tony Robbins says, setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible to the visible. Leonard Bernstein has a famous quote that says, to achieve great things, two things are needed. A plan and not quite enough time. <laughs> I looked up some goal, study, uh, some goal setting statistics online, and here are a couple that I found very interesting. The, one, the first one is a little depressing, so just beware. 92% of people who set goals fail to achieve them. Dude, that's pretty sad. 92% of people who set goals fail to achieve them. So why set them, you ask? We're going to find out. 14% of people with goals are 10 times more successful than everyone without goals combined. I don't know how they got that statistic, but that's what they say. <laughs> now, here's one that you can grok that's easy to understand. People have 65% better chance of achieving their goals if they have an accountability partner. And that is the truth. And Jan and I were talking about our health journey right before service. And my daughter and I are both very conscious of wanting to be healthier. And for me, I've switched my outlook on being healthy as to not a self-loathing thing where I feel like I'm overweight, but that I'm getting older and I want to be healthy and around for my grandkids and I want to be that thriving, cool grandma that takes them on hikes and does stuff. And so my whole perspective on how I'm looking at my health is shifting. And as a result, things are happening at a, at a pretty good pace and I'm feeling very good. I haven't had sugar or dairy or gluten for 10 days now and I've lost six pounds. <laughs> And my daughter is about to go to New York City for the first time in a few years and do the audition season. And what spurred it on was when I gave her her cat back after the holidays, they had traveled and I had cat sat. And I met her in Chattanooga and she, she shared a story with me about, gosh, mom, you know, now that I'm eating snacks and doing stuff, my body just is not throwing the weight off like it used to. And I'm like, girl... I'm, I'm not going to say that's, I'm not going to push my story on you, but I'm just going to say, figure it out now and stay ahead of it. So that because many times in her life, she has seen me complain about myself and, oh, don't take my picture in a bathing suit, blah, blah, all those kind of things. And I'm starting to see how my story is starting to play out in her. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't mean to point at you guys, sorry. But <laughs> I got yelled at at a church one time for pointing at the audience. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. But the thing is, I noticed her starting to repeat my pattern. And I'm like, girl, don't do it. Don't repeat the pattern. Don't start loathing and hating yourself now. Just think of it as being more health conscious. And it's not rocket science. Just move. Just, you know, get rid of all the yucky stuff and eat veggies and some meat You'll be, and some fruit. You're going to be great. So anywho... Uh, she's my accountability partner, and we're checking in with each other. And I put it on Facebook because I have no filter, and I put everything on Facebook. <laughs> so I have about 1,200 people that are going to be my accountability partners in the next couple of days and months. Well, humans have a reticular activation system, and it's right at the base of their brain, right at the stem of the brain. And with this reticular, uh, reticular activation system, um, it's as you write things, it's your perception basically is what it is, and it's how you perceive things is, is what this reticular RAS, reticular activation system is. And they, there have been studies that say the more you write things down and physically write things and then look at them and then repeat them out loud, uh, the better chance you are at succeeding, like if you're learning a language or if you're working on a project or, or whatever. Uh, so I'm telling you, if you have any goals or if you've been thinking about doing something new this year, uh, write them out. Start writing them out and then read them over consistently and say them out loud. Every time we physically bring them to life, like Tony Robbins said in the quote before, we are uh, actively manifesting them into reality. And what I'm going to do this year, I have my little notebook, my little journal. It's thin. It's not a big novel-sized journal. It's just a teeny little day calendar with some notes, pages. 
and I'm just tracking my weight. I'm becoming conscious of it. And for me, if I'm writing it down and I'm seeing what I did and what my exercise was, it's also an ego booster too because it's, oh, look what I just accomplished. And it, and it helps us uh, become more bo- motivated to feel good like that again and to feel good about ourselves. So write out your accomplishments, and at the end of the year especially, I know people talk about the New Year's resolutions, I think there should be a current year salutations and, and congratulations. And that's, I guess that's kind of what New Year's Eve is about, but maybe we've strayed from it, maybe some people have always done it. But you know, the last couple of weeks of the year after the, all the Christmas fray is, is done, in between Christmas and New Year's, perhaps this year make yourself a list of all the things that you accomplished issues that you got over this year, fears that you overcame, new things that you tried. And if you've been writing things down all year long about your goals and what you want to do, um, you know, go back over them and see where you made the check marks. Oh, I did that, did that. It's, It's a real ego booster. It helps. There's a person named Kath Kyle, and she has a website about managing business success. And she says people who write down their goals are 20% more successful than those who don't. And she goes on to say that those who set reasonable tasks for their goals and initiate weekly progress reports with peers or with a friend tend to achieve 40% more than those who don't. So there's that. Many of us think about goals in our beautiful, magnificent brains, and then we just coast along, and we think about them, and we kind of have, they're kind of, they're kind of the pie in the sky dreams, the elusive goals that we think about, the fantasies, oh, what if I could do this or that? But we may set goals in our minds and then coast along and really not invest a whole lot of time and energy into into actually uh, achieving them. And then we're disappointed when we don't achieve them. Like with my, my weight over the years, you know, being disappointed, at, but yet I really didn't shift my appetite. I mean, I really didn't shift my diet, this, that, or the other. But if for some reason, if we start out writing things down and making a plan, even then sometimes we can fail uh, because real life takes over and, and things take our attention. Or we can self-sabotage ourselves. Or we simply just drift off track, completely forgetting about our goals altogether. But then those who are successful with their goals have created an outline or a plan of action. They've invested the time and the energy. And they've written down what they've done so they can see that they've invested the time and the energy. There's an old saying that someone uh, threw at me recently that says, it may be who you know that gets you there, but it's what you know that keeps you there. And uh, right after I heard that phrase, like the next day I heard an interview on NPR with Josh Groban, the singer and the actor. He's a really funny dude, really an awesome, awesome guy. This uh, was a Terry Gross, I think it was on Fresh Air. But so the, the saying again was it may be who you know that gets you there, but it's what you know that keeps you there. Well, David Foster was who he knew. David Foster somehow found him on some old audition tape and and found out how to contact him and catapulted him into major success pretty quickly. Uh, He was uh, 15 when David Foster found him. And at one point during the interview, uh, Josh talked about his 10,000 hours, meaning from that point forward, and you know, it may be who you know that gets you there, but what you know that keeps you there, that was his 10,000 hours, what he knew, what he had learned, and what he had experienced all along the way. That was what he was referring to as his 10,000 hours. And uh, he's now in his early 40s, and he's comfortable and finally confident in his own skin. And he has learned and taught himself how to train for his performances. You know, his performances are like his goals. And he knows, okay, I've got to do this, so I've got to have to do these specific exercises. I'm going to have to do this specific thing, that specific thing. He's learned how to do his homework So his success is guaranteed. Accountability. He holds himself accountable, and he knows he has the skills to pull from, and it helps keep him motivated. Along the same thread, my husband got me a fancy Italian cookbook this year. I don't know if any of you have seen Lydia on PBS. She's like the Italian Julia Child. Let me see if I can pronounce her name. Lydia Maticcio Bastianich. And she's like... 
the, the barefoot contessa. I mean, she's, she's one of the famous television cooks. She used to have her mama on the show all the time, and she does these brilliant Italian dishes, and Eddie, my husband, and I love Italian food. Um, so we've been enjoying your show on PBS for the past few months, and Eddie surprised me for Christmas and gave me one of her cookbooks. And I'm like, oh, boy, man. I don't know. Watching the show, she makes it look very simple, but not so much. So, uh, anywho, for the three dishes that I have successfully made thus far, um, I spend a fair amount of time looking at the same page over and over again, reading it, putting it down, reading it. I mean, I was, you know, these are fancy schmancy Italian recipes. I don't know. I wasn't really trained to cook. I taught myself how to cook, and it's outside my wheelhouse. And it's kind of fun, though, because I'm an artist, too, and all of us like to create. All of us have that artistic uh, thing in us. So I made the first one, which was just a salad. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go easy and just do a salad. It's hard to mess up a salad. I followed the directions exactly. I read them. I reread them. I made sure all of the ingredients were on my phone. I didn't write them out, but I did put them on my phone. And, uh, and I got to the store, I got home, I had everything timed perfect. The salad was perfect, then the chicken cacciatore was perfect, and then the chicken and rice was perfect. And I even did a salad dressing too. So I've done four successful things, but not because I didn't prepare ahead of time. I read and reread, I wrote everything out, I made sure I had everything and I was ready to go. I set myself up for success and, it was, and it's been successful. Now, Another thing to consider when pursuing your goals is don't try to tackle it if you're not ready to deal with it. I recently put a new shower curtain liner up, and uh, as I was getting out of the shower and I was wrapped up, I, I looked down and I saw that the shower curtain liner was like four inches down into the tub. I'm like, well, I'm not ready to deal with this right now. <laughs> and, a, and a thing in my head said, if you're not ready to, uh, don't try to tackle it if you're not ready to deal with it. And so I, for once, I listened to the voice in my head. And I went about my day, and I, you know, I got dressed, I dried my hair, I did a couple of chores. I'm like, oh, I got to go fix that shower curtain. And boop, boop, boop. I didn't want to mess with it right then because it's so sensitive. I knew it would just all come flinging down at the time. And so I went back and boop, boop, boop. Now, this may seem like a silly, small example, but it's a big metaphor for life. How many times... Do we try to tackle things that we're not ready to deal with and that we haven't prepared for? Sometimes we don't have a choice. Sometimes we are just thrown into situations and we have to think on our feet. But for those times when we can choose to have goals and choose to accomplish things, make sure that you set yourself up for success. Don't try to tackle it unless you're ready to deal with it. Here's another one. Support yourself from the very beginning. Be your own best cheerleader. Louise Hay, I, that's actually my Bible. It's the book that I, it's the new thought and, and spiritual book that I go to the most often because uh, it was one of the first ones uh, in my generation. Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. And it's the one, it's, it's that book that you open up in the middle and it gives you all the body parts and what the psychological uh, thing is about that, what the psychological block is, and then the mantra to say. It's a really cool book. But in her book, You Can Heal Your Life, Louise Hay says, when we set standards that are much too high for where we are at this moment, standards we cannot possibly achieve right now, then we will always fail. She goes on to say that when a little child is learning to walk and talk, we encourage and praise them for every improvement they make. The child beams eagerly and tries to do it better. Is this the way we encourage ourselves? when we're learning something new, or do we call ourselves stupid or clumsy or a failure? Perhaps a smart thing for all of us to do is to, when we're taking on new endeavors, is to make a promise to ourselves, a promise to be kind and gentle, I'm saying that for me, and supportive with ourselves every step of the way. So here are a few of Louise Hay's affirmations, and I want you to repeat them after me. Divine intelligence gives me all the ideas I can use. Are you ready? Here we go. Divine intelligence gives me all the ideas I can use. This one isn't as wordy. Golden opportunities are everywhere for me. Golden opportunities are everywhere for me. 
All right, you're starting to sound a little peppier now. This one's pretty easy. There is plenty for everyone, including me. Yes. All right, the last one. I establish a new awareness of success. I establish a new awareness of success. And you can customize your own. The one that I have been using lately, it's like a general prayer for myself and for, for everyone around me. I've just been taking multiple times during the day now to still myself and to just gently say, Spirit, I allow you to enter in and I allow divine alignment. Y'all don't have to repeat that one. Y'all make your own ones up. It's very easy. We're all creative people, and we all have different needs. And we all have different words that help influence us and, and, and help trigger us in a good way and help shift us in a good way. In our family, it has become a tradition during the holidays to put puzzles together when we're all together in the same house. And it, it, it started uh, just this past Thanksgiving, but already, as soon as Christmas came, the kids were at the house. We, we were back together again. And as soon as they walked in, where's the card table? We brought the puzzle. I'm like, no, no, man, I got the puzzle. I, we were already having a puzzle duel off. But it's great when you're all working on something during the holidays. It's kind of a group participation without all the pressure of being a group participation. People can tap in if they're interested. You know, there's only a little bit of space available around a puzzle anyway, right? And so, but before you put the puzzle together, you dump all the pieces out, and then what do you do? You can't just start randomly putting them together, right? What's the first thing you have to do? Find the corner pieces. Well, yes. <laughs> That's true. We all, it isn't the first thing, but yes, that's one of the things you do. You, find, you start prepping, right? You prep for the puzzle. You have to flip all the pieces over the right way so you can even see. Well, with the corner pieces, it doesn't matter if they're flipped or not. But yeah, so Jan's right. Technically, that is a first move that you can definitely make. You turn the pieces over. You find the corner pieces. Um, my job on the team as the others just start randomly grabbing at pieces and frantically try to put together, I sit on the other side and get all of the flat pieces in a pile. I don't even try to put them together yet. I just get them all together in a pile. I mean, we're all going to have our own different puzzle techniques. But the point of the story is, you know, everybody has their little thing, and then, then the sections of the puzzle start to emerge. And, you know, Alex will be on one, oh, I, I got this door over here. Kelsey's like, I got this boat down here. I'll be like, I'm still put organizing them all by color because I'm OCD Virgo over here. So as you guys pick, I'm going to be categorizing them by color now so that when you're looking for a blue piece, you can look on the blue side. I mean, that's how I am with a puzzle. And as a result, we can take a 1,000 to 3,000 piece puzzle and get it knocked out pretty much within 48 hours. With the four of us you know, tapping in and out and really digging into it. And then when we get frustrated or, or overwhelmed, just fall away. And then somebody else taps in. And with all that said, sometimes it takes a village. We don't always have to tackle our goals all by ourselves. Above and beyond having an accountability partner, think of people you may know that have accomplished something that you want to accomplish and talk to them about it and learn from them. Ask them what steps they took initially and ask them about any pitfalls they may have encountered. Look up online about your goal. And just like Josh Grobin and me with the Italian recipes, um, prep. Take those 10,000 years or, you know, most of, we're all over the age of 42. He's 42. We're, we're all over 42, so we have like, Tens of thousands of years of experience and know-how and energy and smarts to accomplish whatever we want to accomplish. There are all sorts of people and information out there that can help you on your way. One last thing and then I'll sum up. My husband and I recently watched a documentary called Beyond Utopia. And it tracks the journey of how a seven-member North Korean family escaped and was uh, in the end able to end up in South Korea, free and happy and healthy. I just gave away the entire thing. But it, it says that's what the plot of the thing is when you look it up. But the thing about this movie is there was a pastor in South Korea, and he has a delegation of people in many different countries that help these people and drop things off in the woods for them and drop off supplies and give, you know, give them general help to cross borders and this and that. 
And on the very last leg, there are many harrowing legs to this journey. And on the very last leg of the journey, they were in a safe house in Laos. And there was a river separating them from Thailand, which was going to be their final destination for a while, the country where they wouldn't be arrested. Um, so on this very last night before they crossed the river on the final leg, the pastor kept meeting up with them along the way. That most of the time they were going through woods and they were on foot. It was crazy that all of these people survived, and they did. Um, and many of them do because of this pastor and other people like him that are helping these people. Well, so on the very last night in Laos at the safe house, the pastor has them all in the living room. There's the 85-year-old mother, the, the mother and father uh, with the two young daughters, aunts and uncles. There are seven people. The kids were five and seven. They were very small. And, and they had already gone thousands of miles from North Korea all the way down to Laos, and they were on this last leg. And here is the pastor who at this point they consider, you know, their savior and friend because he has helped him all this way. And he says, here, and he has a dry erase board. And he's saying, here is what you must do. First, you must go through the woods quietly. Then you must find the boat. It'll be at the end of the path. You must be very, very quiet. The boat is here. You must get on the boat one at a time. He was giving them very specific instructions how to get on the boat, how to get off the boat. You will hear many noises. You may hear other patrol boats. You will hear boom, boom sometimes. He was giving them like crazy specific things for them to know and be aware of. Well, the day, the morning came. They went through the woods. They did exactly what he told them to do. And all through the movie, you, they're panning to the people uh, to the family, as the pastor is reiterating, you must do this, repeat after me, you must do this. And uh, even the little girls were like, yep, they were in full 1,000% attention and energy. And considering they had walked all those miles, and by gosh, they got to the other side of the river the next day. And the one thing that the pastor said is, when the, when the authorities catch up with you this time, don't run. You don't have to hide. You want them to get you because the, in Thailand, the authorities will get you to a safe house and they will get you the help you need to get your documents in order. And they will provide for you and help set you on your way. And invariably, this family ended up in South Korea where they wanted to be and where they had other friends and family. All of that to say, when this seven-member family set out at the beginning of the movie, they had zero plan it was just that one of the pastor's helpers was roaming the woods in a route that people generally take and stumbled upon them and said, hey, do you need help? And the family's like, yes, we need help. They had zero plan and just randomly were found in the woods by a friend of the pastor's. And by the grace of God, literally, they made their way. And uh, because of the detailed or network that this pastor had set up to successfully get people out. Hey, so all of that to say... You know, this movie actually puts first world things in a, <laughs> in a much different place. But it brings it home when we broaden our horizons and watch films like this and see the real story of what's happening in the world and what's happening with our fellow human beings. We're all connected. And so when some of us succeed and when some of us are determined enough to have goals and achieve them, and, and feel the, the happiness of that success, it allows those around us to feel like they can have goals and they can succeed. So for all of us who have made resolutions for 2024, congratulations and best forward in moving forward to achieve them. First of all, make sure you don't put the cart before the horse. Write your goals out and create some kind of plan of action. Find a person or peoples to be your accountability peoples. Put the time and planning into it so that you will get the most out of it. Don't tackle it unless you're ready to deal with it. Remember to be your own best cheerleader and be gentle with yourself. Don't be afraid to ask others for help. And the most important one, know that miracles and blessings are surrounding us always. Our better angels and even angels we have no idea are on our team are there. I know they are because I've, I was telling Jan on the way up here, I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts. It's 12 degrees. I rolled my window down for the drive-thru and my window wouldn't go up. 
And it's 12 degrees outside, and I'm on 575 going 75 miles an hour in 12 degrees. What am I going to do? I'm like, oh, and as soon as I tried to roll the window up, I heard my husband's voice yesterday. Don't try to roll the window up. There's something wrong with it. And I'm like, oh. But all that to know that miracles and blessings are surrounding us because I looked at that window. I pulled up, and I looked at that window, and I said, ain't nobody got time for this, God. Y'all, the team, my angel team needs to take care of it now. And I got my thing out, and I was writing notes on my thing. And I'm like, that's just being taken care of. I'm writing. And all the while, my energy's going, that's being taken care of. And sure enough, as I tried it again, it finally went halfway up. And then by the time I got up into 575, I had pulled it all the way up. Miracles and blessings and your angels are out there. And they, will, they don't just show up at random times. They show up exactly when we need them when we allow them to be there and to know that they are there. Uh, in closing, let me just say, I apologize for being long-winded. I haven't done a talk in a while, so thank you for letting me be here today. Um, here's a quote by Rumi, and I just thought it was really cool. I thought it would be a nice way to end. Let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will not lead you astray. Namaste, everyone. Thank you. They're way ahead of me. This is the time in our service where we gratefully accept our tithes and offerings. And the ushers are getting the baskets and are going to head up this way. Okay, would you share with me the op opening excuse me, the offering affirmation, please? Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. And so it is. As they pass among you, they're going to the basket's going to go to every person. If you're putting an offering in or not, if you do it consistently giving, just pass your hand over it and bless your Give offering. It the prayer hover. Blessed. Exactly. There are, we've said this many times, three ways to support the church. You can do it old school, send a check. P.O. Box 832, Blairsville, Georgia, 30514. Sign up for consistent giving. You can do it online. I, I checked it out yesterday, and the, the, you go to the website. It's very easy to navigate through. And I'm like Jennifer. I'm not a techie person. So anyway, all of the love and all the blessings that are in these baskets are multiplied throughout our church and throughout our community. We greatly appreciate the offerings in whichever way you're able to do them. This love in your offerings will be magnified. You'll be amazed at what comes back to you. There are tithes. There are you're man using your time to help, and there are your spiritual treasures. So thank you, God, for being together. Bless us all. Bless these gifts, and bless every one of you who's here today. Amen. Amen. Okay. Wow. Let me just get my head together here. Sorry, guys. This is the first time I've kind of been at this level, so give me just a moment. Mike Davis had everything ready for me. And since that Mikey is really, yeah, tell really you efficient. What. I hope okay. you guys are still thrilled and super happy because yeah. Reverend Mike Davis is... We Locking are so He's the very man. blessed. Uh, every He's every awesome. every Sunday, every time we see him, he grows, and we're just for most grateful. Okay, the updates are going to be really quick. Okay, I won't talk really really fast, but every Wednesday night, weather permitting, God bless us, um, we have our meditation and covered dish gathering, 5 p.m. every Wednesday. We have a lot of great speakers coming up. 
We have Jennifer Farron today, next week. We have Angela Harmon. And we also have, coming up, Mitch Cohen, Jim Rosemurky, Jeannie Ward, again, Bronte Colbert, Jennifer Farron, Angela Harmon, I said her already, but Robin Fulker, and this is a new one. She's a new member of our church, Reverend Mary Lou Palmer. Yay! Wow. Okay, and Mike says that, um, what, about, what did you do? His writing is like a pharmacist, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but be ready because coming up, he has not one but two surprises in store for us. Okay, uh, again, as we always say, please remember that we, one of the ways we support our community is through our Pennies for Heaven funds. It's kept confidential, but if you need help, one time your, your water pipes break, whatever, but go talk to Mike and it will be kept confidential, I promise you. If you haven't done so, sign up for the Mountain Spirit newsletter, unitychurchofthemountains.org. And the service was streamed live today, but very soon it will be online through Facebook. And you can do what I did yesterday and go back and visit a couple of the very, very fine services. I see more and more people logging in to to look at the um, at the Facebook you know services. A couple of several of them were well over a hundred viewings. Wow. That's awesome. So it's not just the people who are online. Now, if you are online, you want to let us know you're online, go to the right-hand side there and give us a comment. Hey, I'm here and thinking of you. We'd love it. So said and done. And Jennifer, how about the uh, prayer of protection? Let oh, me see this, here. You want to do peace song and then prayer for protection? I was wondering. I'm looking here. Yes, that's what it has. That's, that's what we want to do. She's got it. What, well, yeah, it has it incorrect up here. The peace song is the last thing we do before they head for the door or the bathrooms I or whatever. It. Then so let's do our prayer. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Let's take Ready? a deep breath in. Um, I think we're going to do the, this time we're going to do the, uh, prayer uh, yeah, <laughs> the prayer for protection. May my mind know that it may not be limited. May my heart know that it cannot be separate. May I know only wholeness of being and claim nothing less than the fullness of life. Now that you're all warmed up, we can stand up and just belt out the peace song. Thank you. protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Have a wonderful day, everyone.
Thank you.
That's a homeless shelter. But but what I'm talking about is just a warming center just through the cold. Oh, it's oh, just through the cold. Yeah. There's a place you can come in, you can get warm, and they have showers at that church and they were saying you could take a hot shower oh. and you could be there through the night. Okay. And uh, oh, Patrice Kilpatrick. Central heat and air put in oh, downstairs, yeah. and the intake had to be across the room from the fireplace. Oh, so yeah. when we burned the fireplace, oh, 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 oh. we had the same thing happen last night. I was out there yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 shows, and like we really enjoy having the Red Barn show. It has great vibes, and it's fun, and it's on fire. But like then downstairs, it was like it was like 50 degrees because well, the, the heat was on. The, we can't do the fireplace and have the power. We can't have. I mean, it's like just in the end.
with it. I mean, I, I don't know. Our heating system is correct, but it doesn't really it doesn't really do it for me. So like, I think you know, like right well, behind the most is direct heating. Yeah. 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 Yeah.